my name is Bincy. Um, as Arvind was just saying, I am a forensic examiner at Rapid City Police Department. Um, and I have been employed here since 2018. This is my uh, third year with the department. Um, and Dawn, sir, thank you very much for inviting me to do this. It's an absolute pleasure to be able to do this for you and for your students. Um, I haven't done this in a very long time. Um, and if you're having issues hearing me, uh, please feel free to stop me and ask me to repeat. Um, it's a Saturday night for me here and I just took off on a short vacation because um, it's a very long weekend here. It's Thanksgiving weekend and I just traveled here to visit my nephew. And they've all gone shopping and just in case, uh, he's only two years old. If in case he pipes in between, uh, I apologize in advance for that. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to be uh, talking about my position and my experience and some of the opportunities in the US uh, for forensic science students, especially international students. Um, so like I said, I'm a forensic examiner, forensic examiner one. Uh, there are a lot of uh, requirements that I need um, to work my way up in the forensic examiner two and three. So currently, I uh, my areas of expertise would be crime scene investigations and fingerprints. Um, as a crime scene investigator, I respond to major crime scenes. And now when I say major crime scenes, um, it's usually armed robberies, sexual assaults, homicides, double homicides, um, officer-involved shootings, or any crime scenes involving IEDs, which is uh, improvised explosive devices. Now, the best thing about my department is that every police officer is trained to do crime scene investigations. So if there is a burglary or theft, instead of calling a forensic examiner out to those scenes, police officers, they basically handle those crime scenes, which is a great help for us. And um, as a forensic examiner, I not only uh, process and examine crime scenes, but um, I also examine suspects and witnesses. Uh, also vehicles involved, et cetera. Other than this, um, it's also my primary responsibility to attend autopsies. Um, I have to document everything from the start till the end, collect evidence. Um, now, as a crime scene investigator, 70 to 80% of my job is photography. Um, well, we also do crime scene sketching, which is very rare uh, because, you know, there are advanced technologies we use right now to document a crime scene. It's very rare that I uh, sketch out a crime scene. Um, I think one or two scenes a year is what I do at the most. Um, and if we need further documentation, uh, we have drones and they uh, get us recordings of a crime scene from every angle. So we just pull up those recordings if we need those. Now, other than that, um, I'm also a fingerprint examiner. Um, I right now uh, process my evidence items at the scene and also in the lab, I'm also authorized to do 10 print examinations. But other than this, I am in training to be a fingerprint analyst. Now, um, like I just said, my expertise is in crime scene investigations and fingerprint examination. And I've been employed here for three years. And you must be thinking, three years is a very long time to be still in training to be a fingerprint analyst. But unfortunately, fingerprints is one of the most intense fields in forensics. And to be a crime scene investigator, it was a one year training program for me, uh, but my education helped me a lot. And I was able to start, I completed my one year training program within six months and I started working my cases independently. But uh, fingerprint analysis 
uh, it's a five year training program. So I still have two more years to go and I have 200 more training hours to go before I actually start looking at uh, real world cases. Right now I'm training on um, uh, cold cases and my training prints, but yeah, it's, it's absolutely much more intense than what you study in your undergrad or your grad school because uh, the chances of making an error with the fingerprint is absolutely high. So you need certain number of hours before you're actually authorized to do real world cases. Um, other than this, um, one of my um, big responsibilities would be to write my reports because let's say I work a homicide today or work a case today, uh, most of my cases don't go to trial until a year after. So it's very important for you to remember what you did. And you would think, oh, hey, I worked the case. It's pretty easy to remember what I did. But no, you actually forget the details. So it's very, very important to document everything that you have done. So writing reports, technical detailed reports is a big part of my job. And um, my one of my last responsibilities would be to testify. And obviously everything that we do is to testify in a court. Um, so that's what I do. Uh, two of my cases are going to trial next, next week. And I am in preparation for that. I am absolutely nervous about that, by the way, because there were two major homicides that I worked. And um, yeah, hopefully it goes well. Um, that's pretty much about my job. Um, and other than that, um, like Arvind was saying, I have a bachelor's degree in forensic science. I uh, got my bachelor's degree from Jane University. Um, between 2013, 2016, I graduated in 2016. And I decided to move to the U US to get my master's degree. I moved to the US in 2016. Um, I think three months after I graduated, uh, it all happened really fast. Um, it was a two-year master's degree program. I have a master's in forensic science uh, with a major in forensic medicine uh, from the University of Maryland. Um, it was supposed to be a two-year program, but I graduated within a year and a half, which gave me uh, six extra months to hunt for a job. And while I was a grad student, I um, complete, so throughout my graduate school program, I did internships. Um, so I interned at uh, medical examiners offices, at police departments, at sheriff's departments. And after graduating within six months, I was hired by my current department and I have been with them for about three years now. That's pretty much about, um, you know, my background and how I got into this position. Yes, this is my very first job. Uh, so I'm still learning. Um, you know, when I was a grad student, I thought, you know, my studies, it, it's going to be done for good um, after graduating. But I feel like I've studied a lot more after I graduated. Um, yeah, because there is new things come up in forensics every other day. And as a crime scene investigator, you have to be up to date about everything that's happening in the field. And I'm absolutely lucky because I get to work with uh, some of the most amazing forensic examiners here. And I get that experience firsthand. And it's an absolute pleasure to share all that with you guys. Um, and I'm sorry, my voice is cracking up. It happens every winter. Um, yeah, as the weather becomes really cold, my voice starts cracking up. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, other than this, I was asked to talk about, you know, opportunities in forensic science in the US. Um, so I'll start off with my department. So. I work for a police department, which is a local agency. And as a local agency, we work with 
statewide agencies as well as federal agencies. So back home, I know in India, it's um, state government and central government. So here, instead of calling it a central government, I'll be calling it a federal government system, which is a federal agency. Um, so police department, under the police department, I fall under CID, Criminal Investigations Division. Um, so I work with a crime lab. We have forensic examiners, uh, we are crime scene investigators and fingerprint analysts. And then we have forensic chemists. We have drug chemists and blood alcohol chemists. And we also have forensic media specialists. Um, and we are all um, in-house examiners. Other than this, we have a statewide agency that we work with. And there we have our forensic biologists, toxicologists, firearms examiners, and forensic anthropologists, odontologists, etc. Now, the good thing about working here is that uh, just because you don't have every expert in your department doesn't mean that you're not going to get your job done. We have a um, countrywide network. So if in case we need um, an expert to specifically, let's say, look at blood stains or footwear impressions or tire impressions, we get to reach out to anybody in the country and we get to call them in and they will take a look at your case. They will review your case. They'll work your case and they'll testify in court. Um, sounds easy, which means that every single uh, branch in forensics, um, there are specialized experts. So when my cases go to court, I can only testify um, in crime scenes and fingerprints. If there is a specific testimony uh, that's required in blood stains or footwear impressions or biology or specifically blood, um, I absolutely cannot testify um, in it because I am not deemed an expert in those fields. Um, now, as, a, as an international student, you can apply to all these places. So police departments, sheriff's departments, or we have something called medical examiner's offices, um, which is where I interned for a really long time, and then prosecutor's offices. So now prosecutor's offices and um, public defender's offices, they don't really need crime scene investigators, but they do hire forensic experts. Now, um, you know, with someone with a forensic background can really help them take a look at their cases uh, from a forensic perspective. So they do hire forensic experts. Now, as a student, um, when I came to the US, I didn't have any seniors or anybody that I knew who did forensic science. So um, me and my friends, we were pretty much the only three or four people who came to the U.S. And we absolutely had, because things work way differently here and we had no idea how to, what next. Like we knew we wanted to do a master's degree, but then, uh, you know, the system itself was so confusing. Uh, that's mostly because we were not born and raised here and things change every other day. And uh, so we had to do our own research. Now we wanted to know the system better and the best way to do that was to get internships. So in my first year of uh, grad school, I interned with the medical examiner's office. So we have 50 states in the US, right? So every state either has a sheriff's coroner system or a medical examiner's system. And some states, we have both sheriff system and the medical examiner system. Luckily, I lived in Maryland for my grad school for two years and they had both systems available. Now for the sheriff's coroner system, um, he or she is an elected individual. They don't necessarily have um, a medical background or anything like that, they'll have basic knowledge of, uh, you know, a dead body and basic anatomy. 
um, they assist a doctor. And then you have the medical examiner system where you actually have uh, doctors who go through grad school and specialize in forensic pathology. So we really wanted to know, I really wanted to know, uh, you know, um, okay, how, how do these things work? So I took up an internship at the sheriff's department and also the medical examiner's office. I worked as their intern forensic investigator. I even interned as their intern forensic autopsy assistant. I took up multiple roles just to understand what's the difference between the both of it. And also uh, towards the end of graduate school, I also took up an internship with the police department uh, just to understand how their crime scene investigators respond to crime scenes and how they work. Now, at the end of all this, I realized that if there is a dead person, if there is a crime, everybody responds to the scene. Like here, if there is, so uh, the police department has jurisdiction within the city and the sheriff's department has the jurisdiction over the county. County is larger than city. Um, so I every, every time there is a homicide uh, from the police department's end, I respond. And from the sheriff's department, the coroner responds. And also, we have plenty of people coming in from the prosecutor's office too. So it's so basically, until you start working, you are not going to know these differences. But these are the places of employ potential places of employment that you might have.